All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? This is your man, Orlando Presents, and we got our bro, Captain J. Chin Hood, in the building, <laughs> right here on QuakeRadio.com live, QuakeRadio.com live, that's right, that's right, and y'all know what the night is, man, y'all know what the night is. Y'all know it is rock night. That's right. Tonight we do all gospel rock music. We're actually waiting on um, a band to call in. So, um, hey, while we're waiting on the band to call in, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and rock out to a couple of cuts here. And we'll be right back with Mo QuakeRadio.com. Let's go. Get out of the way, you bury your name, anything to forget. The past that is alive. You stay alive, what colors run dry, the demons that hide. The weight is heavy in your mind, you're ready to escape reality and just hit gravity. Every thought you think's poison that you drink, girl, you breathe at the edge of your teeth. Cause we
free and all the sunsets free is free indeed yeah yeah now i'm free and you are free and all the sunsets free is free indeed yeah yeah now i am free and you are free and all the sunsets free is free indeed Right, ladies and gentlemen, yes, 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 man, that was Filthy Rags with Reconcile. I love that joint, man. I love their EP. Their EP is really, really, really good, most definitely. So if you haven't had a chance to listen, and if you're one of those people that, like, say, oh, man, I really don't like rock. Come on, man. Let's, oh, hold on now. Hold on now. Let me see. Hello, hello, hello. Hello? Yes, hello, welcome, welcome. All right, this is Harry. Hey, how are you doing, Harry? This is Orlando, and Captain hey, Jay's on the line. Hey, Harry, how you doing? Oh, not too bad. All not right. Bad. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, Mr. Harry is uh, part of Filthy Rags, so welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Welcome to QuakeRadio.com live. So, uh, man, I've been excited to sit down and speak with y'all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told them all good things about you. Cert- certainly your life is way more interesting than that. I, 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 I kid you not, brother. I know it is not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not doing much. We're walking around in our shorts. Just got yeah. done. Just got done grocery shopping. Got this big awesome. storm moving in. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And, we, and we found uh, distilled water. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I need to start. How are you fire. guys doing? We're doing pretty well. Pretty well. The show has been kicking off. We've been playing some great music. We actually, that's kind of funny. We actually just got through playing Reconcile. Hey. Oh, our sincerest apologies to everybody here. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I, yeah, you, you, didn't, you didn't hear him off, off air. He was singing it. I'm wait, like, oh boy, that's what I. That's, what I sang with. that's exactly what I was about to say. I was like, man, the, poly, the apologies is me trying to sing her part. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, I love that. Say it again. Sound the screamer. <laughs> <laughs> I love that uh I love that part in Reconcile where um it said um sets you free, sets me free, where he set where uh the sun sets us free. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love the that. Disco breakdown. Man, I love that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good part. That yeah, yeah. <laughs> that gets me going. Yeah, yeah. That's literally the only two lyrics I wrote on the whole album. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you are very creative there, very creative. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> stick with you. Got to stick with what you know. Hey, yeah, yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Well, you know, I stole from James Hetfield. 
Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> so um, for the people that may not know, let them know uh, who you are and, um, you know, where you're from. Uh, well, my name is Mel Becker, and I'm sitting next to my wonderful husband, Harry Becker, and we are children of the Most High God. Amen. Amen. Oh, well, and he gave us a band and a lot of songs and experiences, uh, uh, and the band's called Filthy Rags, and uh, Filthy Rags has traveled all across the United States uh, about five times now, um, sharing music and love, um, God's love. Not our own love, because our own love is stupid and sucks sometimes, um, but God's love uh, with people to the best of our ability um, for the past seven years. And now we're moving on into what I hope is uh, something uh, that's similar along the same lines, but uh, is just a little bit deeper into the water well of uh, humanity. So it's called Mayday. So that's what we, that's who we are. <laughs> awesome. All right. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, um, yeah, so Reconcile has been out for how long now? A long time. What, three, uh, four years? Three years, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but Definitely you're... time for our sophomore album. Yeah, but you're still getting uh, brand new fans like myself, you know, oh. that love the EP, uh, loves, loves the album, um, and <laughs> it's something that's really, really great to me. I love all the tracks on it, how you put it together, the lyrics. Um, so when you were putting this, uh, album together, how long did it take you and, uh, who is the main writer? Are you the main writer? Uh, well, Harry and I write them together, but I'm, I write, I write almost all the lyrics, um, except for that. Yeah. Yeah. Part. And, uh, Harry, <laughs> he writes riffs and we put songs together. Um, and, um, he is responsible for most of the sort of like uh, structural stuff when it comes to the music and writing the guitar parts. I think we both know how to diagram a song pretty well. We can, but so, we'll argue about. Uh, yeah, we'll argue so, about it. <laughs> I think, like as far as diagramming a song, it's, I think we're pretty much. You know, we can do that on our like. I don't think we never argue too much about that. Like. Oh, sure we do. He wanted for Oh My Soul yeah. to be in 5-4 time, and I'm like, no. Yeah, so it is, not true. Doing that. It is true that when That's some of the cute. songs were originally constructed, they were written differently and in different time signatures. Well, that's because his major influences were like Metallica and Tool and stuff. So so it's funny. Reconcile actually was a joke. Like the riff, like the riff was actually a joke because I wrote it super slow and like on the acoustic. It was, it was and we were, and I played it like Three times as fast, and then it just stuck. So that that's how we know the reconcile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's good. Oh, wow. I should play it for you how it used to be. No, I right know. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. I mean, hey, if you if you if you're able to. Boy, my guitar's all the way in the other room. Okay. It's like coming. Coming. All right. I didn't think about that. <laughs> well, I'm going I'm to let uh, Captain J jump in here because he knows of you all a lot more than I do. So I'm going to let him, let him jump in oh, and take you. over. Yes, I do. I've, <laughs> been, I've come to things that you've asked me to show up at. That's how you know people love you if they show up for you. So don't play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have to watch quite a few places. New Boston, Illinois, Galesburg. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, New Boston, there's a fun one. Middle of nowhere. That is one of my favorite places in the whole world. I've met some of the greatest people ever. So yeah, don't be knocking. They, yeah, they do love you. Yeah. I love them back. Well, we love you. <laughs> um, yeah, I just saw you guys were in Galesburg just what, Sunday. I was. I did not go. I stayed I stayed back with the kid. But Mel the B was. I seen some pictures and video and it was beautiful. Let's go. Yeah, I talked to Pastor Sharice uh, yesterday, and she was like, we just, just love Mel. And oh, we are, <laughs> I love him back. Yeah, so we were there with the Extreme Tour um, a couple years ago. There, they, they, we got to yeah. bring him back. We got to bring him back. So um, we appreciate you coming back there. 
to my blood. Spending time, they're, 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 they're very, um, I don't want to be rude with them. They're, I like they're, that. Sour, yeah. they're more traditional. That's the word yeah. you're trying to say. Traditional. Yeah, and they're like, and you know, they just fell in love with how you guys are and your music. Um, Which is weird together. because we are the furthest thing from traditional, like, yeah. you've ever met in your entire life. Good gravy. I still want to play somewhere in that little town called Zion. Zion. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I don't know why. I, just, I have to play there. We can figure out something. Um, I don't know. God told me I would go there. It was funny. <laughs> it's, it's a neat little town in Lake County, Illinois. Um, so I've had a couple questions. I know a little bit about your, your story. Um, I don't think you'll learn as much on that. Um, but a little bit about your history, like how you guys met, um, how long you've been married, that kind of stuff. Well, that's all pretty personal stuff. Oh, good crazy. Yeah. I'll, okay, be, well, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you. So a long time ago in the land far, far away, Harry and I um, uh, were actually married to other people, and those marriages were kind of falling apart and um uh i didn't do necessarily the right thing with my pain and i i started drinking uh and uh he had already been a part of uh the program for a while and uh aa we met in AA. we did well we met at a, a cocaine anonymous meeting um actually that harry started had started many many moons ago um and he was like clean and sober all these years and i thought he was all this good and i misled him by being dressed really nice because i was looking for a job <laughs> he had no idea i was really a dirty hippie um and um you know we met and i i couldn't the very first moment i met him i fell in love with him i um i've always been in love with harry um and uh Aww. You know, we've done a lot of things together. Uh, some of them really, really good. Some of them really, really terrible. And, you know, um, we we actually were using partners in a, a really almost almost should be deadly drug addiction for a number of years. Um, and uh, my husband actually married me uh, while I was in jail serving time for DUI. So um, our story is scattered with uh, that kind of stuff, you know, it's like a real, it's like a real account of a human being's life. Like you see, um, you know, with flaws and all. And then, but the great victory doesn't even belong to us. The great victory belongs to Jesus who saw fit to reach down into the disgusting clay, nasty sewer ridden pit of hell that we had put ourselves in, stuck his hand down in there and said, come on, baby, come on out. Mm. and set us free from that stuff and um gave us a a, a white robe and a, and a fresh stone with a new name on it and he's walked us through telling other people how they can be set free from the same thing um and 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 we're 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 a couple together still doing this and let me explain something to you guys it is unbelievably difficult but my grandpa used to tell me, and I've held on to this my whole life, that anything worth doing is going to be hard to get. Or anything worth having is going to be hard to get. Mm -hmm. And 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 I, I, I believe that, and I see the fruit of that, um, because it's not easy to travel across the country seven times, <laughs> either five oh. times, either. But uh, everything we do is by the grace of God, and, and in my own flesh, you might see some version of something out there on the road, but I promise you, if you see any good, what you're seeing come out of me is the love of Jesus. It's not in any way, shape, or form anything that I have ever, ever done except try my very best to be obedient to God. And that I fail, I fall short on that every single day. But that's how we met. We fell in love. We ended up in a really horrible drug addiction together. And, um, and then God rescued us. He really did um, and gave us these songs and turned us into missionaries. So, you know, I could say that if you, if you really want to hear it, I could say that we've had to some degree a Damascus Road experience. And it doesn't always feel like it. But when I talk about it like this, I realize how very far God has brought us um, mm -hmm. with only a very simple willingness to say yes to him one day at a time. So I don't know why I couldn't, why I would ever doubt that he is capable of doing that in anybody else's life. Um, 
or, um, you know, any problem that I, I come through in my own life, I can already look back and see the faithfulness of this God who has already brought me out of all of this, me and my husband, both. Uh, so I have a lot of hope. If there's hope, if there's breath, there's hope. Mm-hmm. That's it. Sure. Yeah, um, Thank you for that. And so like you said, you did a lot of touring, say seven, seven times around the country. Um, five. That, five, five, five years with um, a little tour called the Extreme Tour. Um, yep. So that probably kind of met through that, was coming through um, a couple times through that. Um, and, it's a, and you guys go to some of the darkest places, you know, in those towns um, and everything like that. And you, like you said, you show God's love to people that some of the people, some of the world has forgotten. Um, and that's something you can't really teach anybody. Um, sure you can. And well, that's what I want to do with May Day is teach people how to, I want to recreate myself over and over and over again. Well, here's the thing. Like, <laughs> we're not, like, we're not going out, like, giving God's love to people. Like, God's going out giving God's love. Right. To He's like, just using me. Yeah, I'm like, just a tool. Like, I'm, I'm the best wrench in the bucket. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, um, so you guys have said that you're um, no longer going to be doing like the extreme tour. So you're, um, you're going to be doing like Mayday. Um, is that like a, a, is that is that what this tour currently is? Like you know, like is that like you know, go all year round continuously, or are you taking time off? Um, cities that you're hitting, you know, kind of where he leads you. But um, is it like you said you're going to take like three months off and then? Go back to travel touring again, or is it just? I, I think that. Wait. Go ahead. Okay, I just wanted to, Jason to finish this whole question. <laughs> you and I, you want to answer, Harry? What? Well, um, you know, my two cents, my opinion of it is, like, it's it's less extensive. So maybe instead of sixteen weeks long or seventeen weeks long, it's only twelve weeks. And instead of doing three cities a week and only spending two, three days in a city, we feel like we want to be able to spend more time. One week in a whole city. You know, like four four to six days intentionally. No, it's it's a um, lot. And be able to partner up with like several of like the outreach organizations in the area, like the people that provide services, like the community. you know, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, we're gonna say, yeah, like making sure that we have hands on with all the organizations in the area at that time to where everybody could come together and we could, you know, be able to ha- have a time and place where, where people can like meet and greet and be connected with resources in their area. Okay. So, so what, yeah, and Harry's right. So, what May Day is, is this is, um, there's a whole lot of people just like myself and him who were sitting around and, and knew we needed help, but didn't know how to ask for it. You know what I mean? Or if we did ask for it, there were all these jumps and hoops and everything that you had to go through, right? Well, so the idea is this, is that Luke chapter 14 says that when you throw a banquet, invite the poor and the the, the homeless and all of those people. And, and he says, invite people that cannot repay you or thank or even thank you for it. You know what I mean? And so that's the idea is, is that that's what we're supposed to be doing. And it really is a stem off of a concept that the Extreme Tour um, uh, does really well called Search and Rescue. And it's just a continual um, day after day search and rescue. So instead of just having three hours or, you know, 20 minutes to talk to somebody, you have several days to really build relationship with that person. And that's always been so that's something that I was taught was that you build relationship before you announce a declaration of the love of God, because then somebody who who is has a relationship with you, you're going to be more likely, you have power to speak into that person's life. That's what you see Jesus doing is sitting and eating with people, building relationship, right? All of this starts with worship. This starts with teams. I don't want to go to churches who they're just trying to, you know, there's one guy who's trying to do outreach. I want to find churches who are dying to do outreach, who have a burning desire for that. And I want to teach them how to do this how to have effective outreach. I think that that is, and that's what Mayday is. It's for the church to learn 
how to how to really be effective and to add them and to give them resources and tools that they can use when somebody like myself back in the day comes walking in their church doors because that's our story. My husband went walking into the church into a church that was in a very prestigious school district in a nice ritzy part of town and it rocked that church's world. They had no idea what to do. So um, so that's what we want to do. And it all starts with worship. So we'll be building a worship team and we'll be helping build each and every day. Uh, we'll be eating together and we'll be helping build these skills for outreach. And then it all accumulates in practicing these skills and going out and and loving people into relationship with God. Because the first Jesus they ever see is you, man. And the way you respond to them is going to set up an idea in their head about who Christ is. Yeah. 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 So, you guys have already kind of done that minimally for that I've seen well with us. Um, and then is, I, I mentioned to Harry um, the other day about um, a friend, Brett, that w when you were in, um, in Galesburg that a couple of years ago, you used his guitar to play. Um, and he was just ecstatic about you, know, you using his guitar. And when I met him, I mean, for years, I mean, he was Jewish, or at least Jewish still, but atheist for a long time. And he kind of stayed with us for a little bit. And then after meeting you guys and hanging out with you guys and seeing God through you, he's now a believer in God. Not, he's not to Jesus yet. He's working on, I'm working with that, or he's working on that. Um, but he's been able to see that there's another another way. That's um, amazing. Praise God. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I had a conversation with him the other day. Um, his ex-wife had got killed in a car wreck. Oh, bless him. And, you know, he went back to, you know, he was just, um, he, had, he was in Chicago, and uh, he was up in Chicago, area, was, was you know, visiting some stuff with his family. And while he was up there, she had gotten, she had gotten killed. <laughs> and he was like, while he was there, he had, to get, he had two days to be able to spend with her and have lunch with her. He goes, that's not a coincidence. And I go to hear somebody that's dire atheist, all that kind of stuff, to say it wasn't coincidence because that was God. That was yeah. impressive. Yeah. Um, so we all kind of played a part in that. And I said, and I appreciate you guys you know, to see somebody come from that. And I say, you guys see that all the time, more often than I do. Um, it's this concept of leaving the 99 for the one that you see Jesus doing all the time. You see him leaving his disciples and going because he had an appointment with a woman at a well in Samaria. You see him leaving the 99 for the one, you know, going and, and standing in a place where he knows for a fact they're going to throw a naked woman at his feet and accuse her of adultery. He has an appointment. He's leaving the 99 for the one. Do you know what I mean? Like you see these things. You Okay, Zacchaeus, there's crowds all around him. And he leaves the 99 to go find that one little guy standing up in a tree. It's everywhere. It's all over the place. And so that's the whole process. And I, the, the idea behind Mayday, again, is to teach churches how to do this outreach so that, so that, that it can be effective. How many churches do you know, they throw an outreach, they spend all this money trying to, you know, get people to come to their big church in the park event. You know what I mean? Who shows up? Church, church people. Yeah. That's who shows up. Yeah. Because because they're not trying to hear it. They see the signs of it and they go, oh, you just want to try to convert me, you know, to being a Christian. Well, I can't do that. First of all, the Holy Spirit has to do that. But I do want to let you know that there's a better way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like and I, need to, and I need to learn from you guys on that, too. So I, I got to figure out how to tap into that. I don't succeed as well as I should on the events that I've held and stuff. Um, so like now we're in North Carolina here, the whole apartment we're staying at, we have literally within a five block area, 15 churches. One wow, block, man. There's literally six on a block. I mean, Where are you at, North Carolina? Gastonia. Where's that at? Just west of Charlotte on 85. Where's Charlotte in the middle of the country in North Carolina? Was we, where's, how far is that, for, I guess, from Almond or from like, uh, we have friends that live around there in Almond. I have no idea where that is. I know where Asheville is. All right. Well, that's all right. Never mind. That's that's that's, yeah, that's where the base of the mountains, and then you go east. And you yeah. 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 No anyway, thanks for telling me. 
Yeah. Um, but I said, there's so many churches out there that want to work together on stuff. So the smaller churches here, I'm like, you just got to do something. You know? Yeah, it comes from out. a burning desire when you see something in your community and God takes the veil off your eyes. You get a mm-hmm. burning desire inside of you for your community that's bleeding to death. You know, like, and when that happens, that fire will, will fan to other people. You know what I'm saying? And then yeah. a lot of people are sitting around going, man, I really want to do this, but I have no idea how. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Guess what? It's a hands-on, one-on-one ministry. Like I say on my page, I have sang for probably a million people, but it's been 10 at a time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. anyway, I digress. Yeah. <laughs> and we love the sound of it. And if I were singing, I, it, it would not. It would not even be ten people. Obviously, <laughs> wouldn't enjoy it. Oh, buddy. Um, <laughs> um, I was going to say I'm going to turn this back to Ross Orlando. I hear. I know he's probably asking the, you know, some questions in there. Yeah. Uh, I was. I was. I was very interested in y'all conversation and everything. Like I said, <laughs> you you know them a, a lot more than I do. So. Um, that's definitely uh, cool and everything. I like I like the uh, testimony, most definitely how you and your uh, you and your husband met and everything. So definitely. Now, as far as uh, with the music, did did y'all just start playing music far as by ear? Or are you trained? Uh, how did all of that happen? Um. I'm not really much of a musician. I just like to play the guitar, but Mel, Mel is uh, classically trained, and uh, she can tell you about her accomplishments. I'm sh- I know she went to Baylor and studied I did. there. I got, uh, local scholarship. I've been singing a long time. I started in the church when um, I was a little girl. Lots of awards and trophies and things like that. I did, but that's okay. Well, it's pretty, like, Texas All-State Choir, that's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> I am from Texas. Okay. I'm surprised I haven't told you that yet because how do you know a person is from Texas? They will tell you. Um, but, uh, that was a joke. It was funny. Anyway. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah. Um, I, I did. I was my, both my mom and my dad sing all my kids sing. It's just in the genes. Um, we all sing really well. My mom made a record when she's 14, uh, my dad has a recording studio in Texas, and he writes with guys um, that are in Nashville that do country music. Um, he's written songs uh, with for Tim McGraw, Blake Shelton, um, Darius Rucker, Faith Hill, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow movies. So um, it comes. I come by it honest. Uh, I've been singing my whole life. Can't remember a time when I couldn't sing. Didn't know anything and i can't remember a time when i couldn't sing and when i cry listen i was 11 years old singing in church i opened my mouth and my grant and everybody in the congregation started bawling and i thought i was because i sucked right i thought it was because i did bad i mean i'm an 11 year old kid watching these grown people cry i'm like oh my gosh am i that bad i got off the stage and i start crying my grandma's like baby what's wrong and i'm like i was so bad everybody was crying she was like oh no honey no, 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 no. That was the Holy Spirit. You're, you have an anointing on you, honey. You have an, and so, you know, I mean, a lot of people won't talk about their stuff, but it's God, God lets me talk about it because he's been telling me for years because the adversary has been trying to beat on me to take that anointing from me my whole life, beat me down, make me not use it, make me use it for other stuff, kill it with drugs, whatever he could possibly do to get me to die and not or not even that just become benign become not useful to the kingdom of god anymore Mm. that's what he's tried to do to me because god put a special gift inside of me when i open my mouth it's his gift you know it ain't my gift it's his gift (laughs) so anyway i i could go on about this stuff all all day long i i have real profound ideas about giftings and what they're for and i just believe that human beings were created to bring glory to the most high god and that's our purpose and if we're not doing that we're not fulfilling our purpose you i don't there you go i saved you in a whole reading on the purpose driven life that's your purpose bring glory to god (laughs) amen amen definitely definitely so uh what do you all have coming up next uh, we are playing New Year's Eve bash uh, for Recovery House uh, Church in Dayton, Ohio. Right, babe? Mm-hmm. 
It's New Year's Eve. Everybody's invited. You guys can drive all the way from North Carolina. Come and watch the ball drop with us if you want. We're going to have karaoke and games, and Harry and I are going to play, and we're just going to be hosting it and leading it, and everybody's going to have your own karaoke contest, probably singing, <laughs> having a good time. Uh, there'll be food, and um, it'll be great. We'll have a good time. So that's what we're doing next to state in Ohio for New Year's. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Then uh, January 4th, we're playing in uh, Kokomo, Indiana. at uh, It's called the Danger Room. It's connected with Woodland Church of God. They have a, a, like a, like a free youth night where they let kids come and check out the bands. And uh, so playing with some old friends. I, I can't, I know we're playing with True Revival, but I think that might be in February. I know Jason likes True Revival. I love yeah, those we, guys. Yeah, we've had, yeah, we've had them out a, a few times as well. Yeah, they're great. They've been, yeah, they've ventured outside of Illinois, uh, Indiana and Illinois a couple times for us. Yeah, so, and then I think that's sometime in early February. We're going back there, pretty much doing the same thing, but uh, doing it with the different different bands. And I don't know, I, I really would like to try to get some of our music produced that we've kind of been sitting on the shelf. And I really would like to write all my equipment's outdated. Like, I think we're, I think we're ready for like an overhaul with a lot of things like new vehicle, new, new mission, new ministry, new, right? I need some new gear, new songs, new style, hopefully maybe a couple new members, new worship team. Hey man, but, if know, anybody, we are, we are, we are, uh, we are, uh, modern day missionaries. And so, uh, I just put up a, a Shopify site so everybody can go check it out. It funds the Mayday project. I don't want to be a burden on people. You know, I'd rather figure out a way to bring money in so that I can just fix this bus and yeah, go do the, yeah, go work the with, plan. Yeah, well, you said with that uh, Shopify thing, what, what items do you have available for? Oh, my God. And how, and how, we, well, I've seen a few things. How do they get there? Like we're kind of we right have now. several collections. We have all kinds of stuff. Um, but what I'm most excited about are the Mayday Pink Bee collection and the Filthy Rags collection that are both on there. Um, we have any cool cool designs. And look, you guys can request Filthy Rags designs if you want. And I can try to put those on them. You can actually um, custom make pretty much anything. We can on demand too. We so sure can. We need and items for your churches. We even have stuff for like the kitchen and churches, oven mitts and towels, and um, you know, anything you can think of. We can pretty much supply a church with as well. We sure do. Just run, and it all funds the Mayday project um, or the May, uh, Mission Mayday, uh, which we talked about. Uh, you know how Paul was a tent maker, so I'm trying to make my own tents here, man. Awesome. Um, and so uh, if you guys want to check it out, it's uh, www.pink-b-project.myshopify.com. Awesome. I'll definitely put a, a, a link to that on our uh, Facebook, and I'll put a link to that on our website as well. That will be awesome. That would be great. Um, uh, um, share, share that out to people so they can find it. Because I said I did look through some cool stuff. There's a multi rag sock, socks and the apron. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be all decked out. That's <laughs> right, man. That's right. I don't know if I can do the boxes, though. I'm not sure if I can do that. <laughs> the oven bits <laughs> are my favorite. <laughs> it pops so bad. I'm like, I don't know well, if I can I get away with it. I just wanted to have stuff like, because I know bands always have pretty much the same old stuff. Like, I wanted to have over and above stuff that, like, you could put in your house, like matching sets of towels and stuff like that. Just because I don't know any band that's ever done it, right? I thought it'd be cool. Of admits and potholders, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be a little different. Got to be a little different. Yeah, like the, the bathroom cup with the soap dish, like the matching soap dish. <laughs> uh, anything else, Orlando? No, that's really okay. cool. I do like that, though. I, I do like the uh, filthy rags boxers, you know, because, so, so, <laughs> you know, just. You just know walking around with with filthy rags on your behind knowing and thinking it's funny right because they're underwear filthy rags isn't that cute well you would you would think that you're the only one but the truth is is everybody would be wearing filthy rags boxes <laughs> and no one would know 
Exactly. Like, no exactly. That's what I said. Men been wearing filthy rag boxers for years. So I like. Now I like. Right. We, we even have really good. Uh, we even really have a really good. They're very high quality, very durable backpacks. Uh, like almost military grade. We we have several colors like camo, different shades of camo and black, and they're like hundred dollar backpacks. And I think they're we're pushing them for thirty bucks. And they are nice. They're it's probably one of my favorite items on the list right now. Well, I'm a I'm a backpack and a hat. Like guy, who doesn't need so. a backpack? And they're super comfortable, super durable, and they look sharp. And they're I think it's great that there's so many different camo designs. Hmm. I'm gonna have to check it out for the backpacks then. Well, people are camo snobs. They have to have like the right kind of camo. <laughs> <laughs> He's funny. <laughs> well, it's definitely. Um Ladies and gentlemen, just letting y'all know if you're listening in live, you're listening to QuakeRadio.com live with your man Orlando Presents and Mr. Captain J. Also, we are sitting down with Filthy Rags. Man, it has been a night. It has been a night. Definitely, definitely learned a lot about this band. Like I said, I've already loved the sound, so just getting to know them a little bit more was uh, was awesome. Was awesome for me, most definitely. So um, I hope you know this isn't the last time we have a chance to sit down and chop it up and talk and things of that nature because. Um, I think a lot of people will learn a lot about you, you know, about your band and about what you've been through, things of that nature. Um, I did have a question. Have you ever been, even when you were um, going with the Extreme Tour and things of that nature, have you ever been to a city and been ministering and testimony and sharing your testimony? And then have you ever had a testimony that made you all just stop and look like wow especially with you what you've been through has anybody ever shared a testimony that just may have floored you hmm that's a great question um i mean i i guess i'd have to think about that one wow um, all right wow that's a great question i mean i i think they all floor me i guess Good answer. Oh, Amen. you know what? Amen. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. Right. Oh, are you, you got one? About, no, are you going to talk about the guy with the fence? Oh, I could. Yeah, that's yeah, a good all one. Right. Yeah, tell him that one. That's a good one. I, um. Well, okay. It's so, a story. So we'll, we'll just we'll just say it's a story. How about that? Well, but that's it's my testimony. Yeah. That's not some other person's testimony. <laughs> I watched it happen. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, okay. So we were in South Dakota and it was actually a place that we were not supposed to go because I was three cities in and I found out that I had no place for my team of 25 people to go when I was supposed to go to South Dakota. And so I called the only friend I had Well, I prayed and I asked the Lord and I called the only friend I had and he let us come. And we didn't even have an event, but we were like, you know what? It was during COVID. That's what it was. Wasn't it, Harry? It was during COVID, and um, it was also during the uh, um, the BLM riots. And it was during the riots, and so we we didn't have a place to have our event, and we just went into skate park. There, they've been trying to get in that skate park for five years. We just went in and did an acoustic event just to get our feet in the water, and there were just a ton of kids there. And we're packing it up, and I've got some meeting I'm supposed to be at, and I'm trying to rush everybody. I mean, like, I'm the primary at this point. Somebody had showed up with, like, a bunch of pizzas, too. Yeah. Fed all the kids. Yeah, it was really cool. So it was really cool. The whole thing was coming off. I was like, wow, this is a really cool God moment, right? And then there's this guy standing over at the fence, and he had been kind of watching the event, just standing over there smiling or whatever. And I'm carrying some stuff back to the van, and I'm really trying to hurry because we have – a conference call with like the board and Ted and <laughs> all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff. And so I'm getting ready um, and I'm walking over there. I'm kind of frustrated. And he goes, he goes, Hey there. I can't remember exactly what he said. He goes, Hey there. He goes, uh, he goes, sure was nice watching you guys out here today. I was like, yeah, man, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I was like, thanks for coming out and having a good time. He was like, yeah, he was like, uh, just really enjoyed watching this happen today. And then I kind of ignored him and he started to walk off and he turns around and he goes, Hey, Mel. Now I did not tell this man my name. Mm. 
he said, Hey Mel, and listen, like my name is Melissa, but I don't, I don't go by Melissa. Right. Um, this is why I said the new name with a, a new name with a, on a white stone. All right. And, um, and, uh, I said, I turned around, I said, what? And he said, enjoy the harvest. And he turned around and walked off into the bushes and nobody knew where he came from, what had happened to him. It, I, he, he didn't know my name. And here's the thing. I ended up in, God had told me several times that I was going to be able to see the harvest. Mm. Uh, the wow. church in that state, when we walked in there, there was no there, church. There was a huge sign that said, welcome to the harvest. I was in Grayson, Kentucky, yeah. which was another city that I didn't, um, I didn't uh, plan on us going to. And there was a giant sign that said, enjoy the harvest 2020, the year of the harvest. So wow. I, I'll tell you another. I'll tell you another quick story, okay? Because I don't think he'd mind me telling. No. Um, you got one minute. Oh yeah, we got. Okay, many so minutes. I think we're out in. <laughs> I guess it was the same year. Was it twenty when we had uh, Mike Lowe and I think it was two thousand twenty. We had Mike Lowe and we had his. He wanted to bring his cousin out on the road with him, and his cousin was a Muslim. You know, we're a Christian organization, but you know. We have what we call project bands, people that will take a shot on and, and just try to minister to them, right? Because the first thing that they expect is for us to, you know, be douchey to them, right? <laughs> you know, like, oh, you're not a believer? Well, you can't sit in the circle with us, you know? Um, and so, but no, I talked to him before he came out. I was like, no, I get it. You're Muslim. Like, okay, is that a problem for you? Like, I was like, we're Christian. Is that like going to be a problem for you? You know, <laughs> he's like, no, let's do it. <laughs> So like he came out and, um, you know, like right away it was like, you know, he, he would like get everybody's attention and be like, okay, can I say my prayer now in Arabic? No. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we're like, I no, sit down. That's what I told him. Yeah. No, sit down. No, I was sit in down. no, sit down. <laughs> we'll talk about it in a minute. <laughs> but it was just crazy. Like, and he really struggled, but I, I just through the ministry and through just, um, just, you know, linking arms with us and doing the thing with us and just being obedient to what God was asking him to do too, which is step out and just see this thing. And like, you know, just try to see it through. Like Jesus found him, like in the midst of all that, like even through, he kept, it, it was weird. Like we do worship at, you know, we would do worship in the meetings and we would do some worship at the end of every event. We would do worship. And sometimes he'd be stuck at church and like have to listen to worship. So he just was he got stuck on repeat. Yeah. Maker. Yeah. He, I guess he got like a, what do they call it? A earworm or a, is that what they call it? A earworm. Yeah, he sat and listened to that song on repeat. Yeah. And he had, and he had, you know, next thing we know, like Waymaker. he's listening to Waymaker and his headphones for like hours on end, like singing through the building and like singing along with it. And then by the end of the night, it's like, he's screaming at the top of his lungs, like having this, you know, really emotional spiritual response mm -hmm. and then uh next time we had a meeting like he wanted to lead us in worship singing that song so he was like singing to jesus and uh i remember he prayed and he was like in jesus name <laughs> and everybody was like yeah <laughs> um so it's not my testimony but you know it's something that happened yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like when Jesus goes for that one, he comes after that one. Right, it's that's so, what it's all about. When you are that one, it's impressive. You know, you always see it, but like, how is that one? You know, I, I, I mean, I never thought he would. When you're that one, you think about it differently. And I'll we'll go after that one. And that's what we're called to do. You know, be that light in the darkness, go for the one. So, Amen. appreciate that. Amen. Definitely, definitely. Well, you know, I'll, I'll say this. It's it's cool being a Christian and, and it's cool being able to travel all over the country. And, and we've we've been to no doubt, no exaggeration, over 500 cities, you know, over the last. So you could do the math on that. And that's from one one coast literally to the other. Texas included. It's the only place we didn't really go was like Montana um, and, and Wyoming, I guess. And unfortunately, we did not go to Hawaii. But, uh, you know, j just to be able to know that like, I feel like our circle gets smaller, but it gets larger at the same time. Like the quality of the relationships um, has become way more meaningful over the years. 
to where, um, you know, if God tells us, Hey, go drive a thousand miles to go see your friend, we go, you know, and, and, and we've learned to depend on that. Um, just because I, you know, God, God doesn't, I don't think really God has that much wherewithal to, to how far away a place is or how far away someone is. He didn't care how far away we were when he came to save us. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He did not care. He did not care how far away you were when he came to save you. And he didn't care how far away from him I was. Like he didn't care how dirty and disgusting I was either. Yeah, we have a saying around here that, that Jesus doesn't expect you to get warm before you come to the fire. Mm-hmm. It takes yeah. you with all your stuff. But listen, stand around that fire long enough, you're going to get warm, okay? You need to stay and stand around the fire. He's not going to let you stay there. So I'm not – we don't preach some kind of crazy, greasy grace around here either. So that's all. Amen. Amen. Well, once again, once again, we do appreciate y'all coming on. I know, you know, you had to hop on from going grocery shopping and everything. So, No, we apologize for not being available earlier. It was great. I, we really appreciate you having us on. Uh, not a problem. Not a problem. Appreciate I was going to ask you, what did, you know, what what does Filthy Rags eat? You know, what did, what did y'all go grocery shopping and get? Aldi's. Oh, we shopping at Aldi. I love Aldi's. Love what, whatever that. the state of Indiana bought us. Po people, we po. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're you know, we're not ashamed of it. We're on government assistance right now, but we're on food stamps. Hey, <laughs> so go to my shop. That's www dot pink dash b dash project dot my shopify dot com. Hashtag in poverty. <laughs> Hashtag missionaries deserve to eat too. There you go. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it. <laughs> we bought, I'll tell you what we got. We got a lot of beans. We got a lot of peanut butter. We got eggs. We got fruit. We got a lot of so like chicken sausage, I think. Mm. Quite a bit of ground beef. And turkey. And ground turkey, which I'm not a fan of, but. We'll live. We'll live. <laughs> There's got to be a way to make it taste good. I just haven't figured out what it is. Oh, uh, I'm telling you. Now take your ground turkey. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you how how to make it taste good. Take your ground turkey. Get you some seasoning salt. Get some um, uh, what is it um? Oh man, come on now, come on now. Brain work, brain work. Sloppy Joe mix. Do you what is it? Sloppy Joe mix. You eat sloppy, sloppy Joe's? Joe mix. Yeah, get some sloppy Joe mix. Make you some sloppy Joe. What I, the what the I thing is? It. Get some um, cheese sauce that comes in the can that you dip your chips in. And uh -huh. once you have your everything mixed up and is inside your pan and is nice and hot, pour that cheese sauce inside of everything and let it simmer. And go ahead and make your sloppy joes from that. You'll thank me later. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Sounds good. Yes, yes. Yeah. When I when I ate like that, that was one of my go tos. So definitely. Woo. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I'll just play, I'll play around with it, figure out something something different. <laughs> but yeah, now we just eat regular food. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> Freddie, we don't we don't eat fast food like hardly at all like hardly ever yeah me either can't do it I, mcdonald's for me is maybe once a year maybe twice a year cannot do it won't do it yeah yeah i really don't yeah. mess with fast food at all yeah i just well, the food we get is fast it's just not food it's taco bell <laughs> Judy loves that every we have to do that once a week. It's her thing. Too. Now Taco, Taco Bell, Bell like, like it's not food. It's fast. Yeah, I'm not, food. Now, I'm not gonna tell you what they're what Taco they're Bell is the out. other Taco I Bell is the other fair. kind of fast food. It is runs through you fast type food. Yeah. It's, it's not it's not food, but it yeah. is fast. 
<laughs> well, if you do, well, hey, Orlando, if you do like a conspiracy, a uh, uh, conspiracy theory hour show, I'll be on that one too. You can call me up for that one. <laughs> we talk about all kinds of stuff. I would love. I really it. wanted. To, I really wanted to do one, but my wife's afraid that. I, I was like, well, what if I did like an anonymous page where no one? I do it on YouTube, and no one would know who the creator was. And I put all my conspiracy theories on there. Wow. I would You're love to. on my YouTube page and do that. I'm cool with that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, yeah, we'll 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 go all the way down a whole nother rabbit hole with all of that. So, but uh, <laughs> but uh, once again, man, thanks a lot for y'all coming on. Thank yeah, you guys. I really appreciated it. Really, really did. So it's good to it's good to be able to put a you know voice and everything with the voice. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> so well, I'm, definitely. I'm sure we'll. I'm sure we'll get to meet you this summer somewhere down the down the line. Oh yeah, I'll be we'll up be there. And, about. I'll be up we'll there in North by. Kakalaki. See, I'm in we'll Virginia, so I'm in Virginia there in North Carolina. So we're gonna we're That's gonna fine. link up sooner or later. So we're coming. <laughs> <laughs> Take that as a promise or a threat. Either way. Else. Yep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great night. God bless you both. All right. God bless y- y'all too. Goodbye. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, man. All right, Captain J. That's been that was a great show. That was a great show. I really, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed um, you know, uh filthy rags coming on and speaking with us and chopping it up and everything and sharing what they got in the grocery bag. That was that was awesome. Yep, there are some good people, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and end it off with one of um, Captain Jay's favorite tracks from Filthy Rags, On My Soul, and actually it's one of my favorites as well. So, definitely, we're going to end the show off with that. And uh, God bless y'all. Thank you for listening in. And we will be back tomorrow night with another show, man, kicking it off, doing things right. All right. So God bless you. And remember, God wants the best for you. Do you want the best for yourself? Let's go with this on my soul by filthy rags. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. Oh,